Father in heaven, we thank you for the assurance that you've given those who are blood bought, blood washed, and blood cleansed. Who are cleansed and bought and washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. That there is a book in heaven, the book of life, the book of the Lamb. We thank you, Father, because of the assurance that our names are written there. Father, we are asking that as there are people here tonight, no doubt, who may be coming for the first time or who have been coming for some time, but who have not been very careful and watchful and prayerful to make sure that their names are written in the book of life. Father, we pray you'll wake up everyone tonight in Jesus' name. You tell us that on the last day, when the trumpet shall sound and the, the dead in Christ shall rise up, we know that there will be many, many surprises. We know that at such a time, many will rejoice, but many will, many will weep. Many will go, but many will stay behind. Many will know that this is a crowning day, but others will know that it's a shameful day for them. And Father, we're asking that as for us who are here, we may not be here in vain in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever you have been telling us, privately and secretly, whatever you have been telling us, as we hear the singing of the saints of God, of the children of God, and as we hear the prayers of believers, and as we read the Bible, Father, we pray we'll be obedient in Jesus' name. Amen. Where we have been stubborn and rebellious, disobedient, resentful to the sound doctrine of the word of God, Father, we ask, soften our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. We do not want to perish with those who are going to perish. We do not want to be lost with sinners who do not know the way of the Lord. Father, we pray that you recover and restore everyone who have gone away in Jesus' name. Amen. Open the scriptures to us tonight. Amen. And Father, we pray whenever that time will be, because we know that the day is fast approaching. The night is coming. And we can see the signs on the sky, the signs all over in the world that the coming of the Lord is very, very near. The love of many waxing cold. Sin abounding everywhere in the schools, in the colleges, in the universities, in the market, among educated people and among the illiterates. We can see the signs of the coming of the Lord. But Father, we are praying whenever it will be, in the dead of the night or in the early morning hours, or in the afternoon. Father, we are praying that you know us as we have been reading the Bible, as we have been praying, as we have been calling upon you, as we are forsaking the world to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, make us worthy in that day in Jesus' name. Amen. Many of our friends and neighbors, today they ridicule, today they make jests, today they say, I can't go that far. The ridicule repentance or restitution or living a holy life. But Father, we know there is a day coming when the person laughing today cannot laugh anymore. There is a day coming when those who are enjoying the world, going on in the practices and customs of the world, cannot go further anymore. But Father, we're waiting and watching. We're looking up because we know that our redemption draws near. And Father, we are praying when that day comes. When Jesus will appear in the sky, when the saints of God, from the four corners of the earth, from everywhere, who are faithful, who are watching, who are praying, who are kept spotless and blameless without wrinkle, part of the glorious church, Father, we know that when those saints will be marching forward, will be going up, count us worthy in that day in Jesus' name. There are those who have sat down in denominations and the dirty clothes of denominations is, is put in their mouths not to be able to talk against sin, not to be able to stand for righteousness. And that day, they will be weeping, gnashing of teeth and regrets and sorrow as the husband will go, but the wife will remain. As the wife will go, but the husband will remain. Father, we are praying that on that day when the parents will leave their children, when the children will leave their parents, in that day when people who have been lost in religion will remain in religion, but those who are real Christians, those who are regenerated, those who are born again, real children of God, Father, on that day when you are calling us one by one, we pray, O oh Lord, make us worthy in Jesus' name. 
what shall it profit if we gain the whole world and lose our own souls? So, Father, we are praying that nothing will make us look back in Jesus' name. Amen. Continue to teach us Amen. as we mix with people in our places of work, in our churches and denominations, among the careless, among the prayerless, among those who are sinning, who don't care about lifting up the standard. Father, we pray that as we mix with them, work with them, live with them, we will not be like them in Jesus' name. Amen. Keep us spotless. Amen. Keep us worthy. Amen. Keep us prepared. Amen. So that when that day comes, our rejoicing will be great. Amen. Teach us tonight. Amen. And use everything you are going to tell us tonight to be ready for the coming of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Genesis chapter 19. We're studying verses 1 to 29. This is the true story. The true account of the deliverance of Lot. When Sodom and Gomorrah went through the judgment of God. The people of Sodom and Gomorrah had been wicked indeed. Very, very sinful. But the time came when the Lord himself came down in judgment and as Bible students and Bible Christians you have already known that Lord came out before with Abraham. But not too long, Lord began to have some reasons, personal and private to him, why he will not want to continue living and working with Abraham. Before long, Abraham sensed this attitude in Lot, and he recognized that the herdsmen of Lot were quarreling or fighting, carrying on strife with the herdsmen of the other person. And so Abraham called Lot and said, It ought not to be so because we are brethren. Fighting is not of God. Quarreling is not of God. Division is not of God. Strife and discord are not of God. Therefore, there must be a solution. It was at that time that Lot made a wrong choice. And in whatever we say tonight, remember the beginning of Lot's problem. Lot made a wrong choice. And whatever may happen in your life after today, remember the basic foundation to your problem. The basic foundation to the confusion in your life is you have somehow, somewhere, along the line made a wrong choice. It may be a choice of the place you are working among the Sodomites and the people of Gomorrah. It may be the choice of marriage that you have looked and you have thought in your heart this is the best because of the well-watered place and you have made a wrong choice in your marriage. It may be in your career that you have made a wrong choice or it may be in worship, in religion, that you have made a wrong choice. But please remember that you are making choices or you are choosing things every day. You make a choice of the types of clothes to wear, of the types of friend that you have, of where to live, of where to work, of how to face the future, of who to marry, when to marry, and how to get married. But please remember that if you have not heard anything here before, you are hearing this today, that the troubles in your life, the headaches in your life, the heartaches of your life, 
are often, many times, because of the wrong choice that you make. So take care of your choices. In Genesis chapter 13, from verse 11, Then Lot chose him of the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east. And they separated themselves one from the other. Lot separated from the friend of God, from Abraham. Lot separated from the person who had been teaching him the ways of the Lord. But he did not count it as anything serious. In verse 12, Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. The men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. It was in chapter 18 where we studied last week that God decided that he will visit Sodom and Gomorrah because the cup of their iniquity was already full. In Genesis chapter 18, verse 16, And the men rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom, and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham the things which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Verse 20. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it which is come unto me and if not I will know and the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom but Abraham stood yet before the Lord in the account following we're told Abraham began to pray because he could talk to the Lord and we learned last week that we have been lazy in, pr in praying. And that as a ministry, we have been guilty of prayerlessness. As workers in the ministry, we have been guilty of prayerlessness. You don't have to follow a Christian home to know whether he is praying or not. If he is praying, the judgment will be delayed upon his family upon his children if he is praying things will become all right in his life because the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much it does not say the indolent lazy a prayer of a sleeping christian availeth much no sir but the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much when we know who we are in the Lord and what privilege we have in the Lord we will become serious in praying and I believe that if those of us here tonight will take up the challenge and begin to pray in the morning in the afternoon in the night and every day I believe that this ministry will be able to reach the world that the Lord wants us to reach. But if we're weak on our knees, we'll be feeble on our feet. If we're weak in praying, we'll be weak at facing the devil. If we're weak in praying, judgment will be coming down like rain, uncontrolled, unrestrained upon members of our family 
upon the churches or groups where we worship. But if we can stand up, if we can uh, put on our belt and say, now we're going to pray, if we unite in prayer, I believe that revival is coming. You heard in the announcement that we're expecting to have a large retreat in December. And I believe that if you begin to pray, and I will begin to pray, that time can be a time of revival, renewal, and refreshing in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So Abraham began to pray, and to the limit of his understanding, to the limit of his knowledge, and to the limit of his uh, grasp and wisdom on the covenant he had with the Lord, he prayed, and he said, if God will find ten people in Sodom and Gomorrah, the Lord will spare the cities, and the Lord agreed and went away. Now the two angels went to Sodom and to Gomorrah to go and destroy the place because the time of judgment had come. We'll take the passage bit by bit to see what, the les what lessons the Lord has for us in the whole chapter. You may be new here at the Bible study. But um, we need to say it once in a while so that we do not forget how we ought to act during the Bible study. In a place where the word of God is studied, where the spirit of God is going to move in saving sinners, restoring backsliders, healing the sick, and sanctifying believers, and baptizing sanctified believers with the Holy Ghost. In such a place, every word that is said at the Bible study will be entering into the hearts of the listeners. In such a place, listeners don't sleep. In such a place, children are not allowed to run around. In such a place, nursing mothers are not allowed to be careless with their children and allow their children to be crying, disturbing other people or distracting their attention. And the ushers generally in such a place where the Spirit of God is going to work mightily. The ushers are not talking uh, to anybody. If they want to tap anybody on the shoulder just gently to concentrate, that will be all right. And uh, people don't ask one another, what passage did they call? That will be disturbing to other people. Because I believe the Lord is going to move here tonight. Yes. And as the ministry spirits, the angels of the Lord are ministering for the heirs of salvation. I don't want anybody coming in here tonight to miss the blessing of God. And so don't be a person that will distract another fellow. And uh, the ushers are not supposed to be running around, moving around to disturb the congregation. And you should be able to control yourself. You shouldn't be running to the toilet every now and then. Um, if you have a um, running stomach, uh, go for prayer well, from the ushers. They will pray for you, and I believe that sin will stop in Jesus' name. Yeah. So don't let the devil just make use of you, uh, going up and down, going up and down, or talking with somebody you have brought to distract anybody's attention, because revival is in here tonight. Yeah. And I believe that if you'll pay attention and you allow the Lord to speak to you every sentence, Every word will be important to you and will work miracle in your life in Jesus' name. In Genesis chapter 19, verses 1 to 3, And there came two angels to Sodom at evening, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself, with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early, and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and he turned in unto him, and entered into his house, and he made them a feast, 
and did bake on living bread, and they did eat. Lot did not know about these strangers. He did not know what they came to do in the town because he said they should lodge with him that night and then pass on the following day. But he said they will stay in the street. It, it is notable here that what Lot had learned from Abraham was still in him. Although he was living in Sodom, he was not following after their ways. His um, life was different. He was a different person. Although he was not in the right place, yet this quality was in him. And when he saw the strangers, he took care of them. In Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Be not forgetful to be cautious, to be helpful, to be kind, to do good, not only unto those who have known before but unto strangers because you'll discover later that you might be ministering to an angel because here he says thereby some have entertained angels unknowingly unawares he didn't say thereby somebody as if it was only lord that ever did it but he said some so it wasn't only Lord. The Holy Ghost is recording it here that when you take care of angel, when you take care of strangers, you might unknowingly be taking care of angels. And in Luke chapter 24, reading from verse 28, some people took care of a stranger. They didn't know who the stranger was. Little did they know that they were taking care of the resurrected, glorified Jesus. It was later that they knew. At the time they were taking care of him, he was only a stranger to them. Luke chapter 24 from verse 28. And they drew near unto the village, whither they went. And he made as though he would have gone further, but they constrained him, saying, Abide with us. For it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread, and blessed it, and brake, and gave to them. And their eyes were opened. And they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. They had the privilege of knowing that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. They had the privilege of seeing the resurrected Christ. Why? Because when the stranger wanted to pass on, they begged him. They pleaded with him. They prevailed on him that he must branch in their house and then he must eat and he must take care of him and while they took care of him he blessed the bread he broke the bread and gave unto them and their eyes were opened and he saw that it was Jesus Christ now today Jesus is not coming around eating um, gari and rice in our houses but we still have the same privilege as these people had in Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, reading from verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, 
and shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them at his, on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was an hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee, a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer, and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. When you take care of a schoolboy who is being persecuted by his parents because he has become a Christian, you are taking care of Jesus Christ. When you take care of a converted schoolgirl who has been forsaken, by her parents because of becoming a believer and you take over the payment of the school fees you are taking care of the Lord Jesus Christ when you see a stranger who has just come to Lagos and came to the Bible study and a true child of God who has nowhere to stay you are taking care of the Lord Jesus Christ when you see a stranger on the street and he asks you a question and you help that stranger you are taking care of the Lord Jesus Christ the angel Lord took him were coming from the Lord they were sent by the Lord and they were coming to obey the Lord they were coming to do the perfect will of God not all strangers you meet are that way not all strangers you meet are coming to fulfill the will of God and to obey the word of God. That is why there is a warning to balance up taking care of strangers. In the word of God, in 2 John, 2 John, from verse 9 to verse, from verse um, 9 to verse 11, it is possible a stranger, a stranger indeed, who is a, a, a night worker, highway robber, has just gone to steal something, and then he knocks on your door, and he says, please open to me. Uh, who are you? I am a stranger. Take care of me. And then you say, they said, at the Bible study, take care of strangers. And then all the load that he has just gone to steal in the factory, he puts in your, in your house. When the police people come, they say, uh, who is the owner of this? You say, uh, it's a friend. And then they catch you, take you to the police station. You look for this friend, you can't see him anymore. And then you go to the prison. They jail you for stealing. And then you write a letter to the ministry and you say, well, I did what you told me to do at the Bible study. And look at where I am now. That's not what he told you to do. And it does not mean seeing a false preacher, somebody who has come to work for the devil, making your house a base. No. Or taking a schoolgirl, a schoolboy, who will be disobedient at home, who will say, I'm being persecuted for righteousness sake, when actually he was being punished for being rebellious, disobedient, and lazy. We must keep a balance. Second John from verse 9. Whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, 
receive him not into your house. Neither bid him God's speech, for he that bideth him God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. But this should not make you negligent of taking care of those who are genuine children of God. Those who are really born again. Those who are actually living right. They may be having accommodation difficulty. Or they may, they may, they may be out of job. And they need your care. They need your hospitality or your courtesy. They need you giving them bed, giving them uh, clothes to cover themselves, or giving them a type of care or the other. If they are real children of God, if you are taking care of them, you are taking care of the Lord Jesus Christ. Genesis chapter 19. Reading there from verse 4. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot, and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. Lot went out at the door unto them, and shut the door after him, and said, I pray you, I beg you, I plead with you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold now, I have two daughters, which have, known, which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. They said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came into Sir John, and he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them? And they pressed so upon the man, even Lord, and came near to break the door. But the men, put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door and they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they willed themselves to find the door. The angels were there to see how wicked these people were. They came on examination. They wanted to see all that these people were doing and as they were in the house of Lord, the men came around both young and old and they came to Lord. they came from every quarter they said where are the men who came to you we want to sin against them we want to now when you hear the word you, you hear some people call Sodomites now, Sodomites are people who commit immorality. Men with men, walking that which is unseemly, that which is sinful among themselves, acting to a man as if that man were a woman. That's what they wanted to do. So when they came around, Lot knew that these were wicked men. He knew that they will commit sin with these people. And he wanted to protect the two angels uh, who were called the two men with him. But the point we want to notice is, on the eve of their judgment day, they were still eager to commit sin. And it will be exactly like that at the time when the Lord will come. On the eve of the rapture, just a few minutes a few hours to the rapture, there will still be some sodomites. There will still be some people, sinners, who will be committing sin. Drinking, fighting, committing immorality. There will still be some women submitting themselves to immorality. Filled with pride, with eyes full of adultery. They will still want to be committing sin. But I want to show you other people in the Bible. 
who very near to the time of their judgment were still bent, still determined they were going to do evil. There are those in the world we're living now who, who have um, died like that. Suddenly, they did not know they were going to die so soon because they wanted to go on a journey. But before going on that journey, they committed sin. And as they were going, without a chance of repenting, an accident came. They died and went to hell. And there are people, I'll show you just now, and Jesus said, as it was, so shall it be. When the Lord will come, there will be people who will be committing sin. Let me warn you, sinner. You don't know the last sin you'll commit before the Lord will come. Because just at the time, you are saying, I will do this again. I will try this again. Then the Lord may just come without you having a chance to repent. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Reading from verse 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God. Which fear before him, but it shall not be well with the wicked. Neither shall he prolong his days, which are a shadow, because he feareth not before God. It shall not be well with the wicked. In Exodus chapter 14. Remember what we are checking up now in the word of God. Those who committed sin on the eve of their judgment day. Just the night before the judgment came. Just a few hours before the judgment came, they still went on in the hardness of their hearts, wanting to commit sin. And if you have been sinning and sinning and sinning, remember the next sin you commit may be just on the night before the day of judgment will come before you. Some have gone before you. Who did it like that? and died suddenly after to face the God of judgment. Exodus chapter 14 from verse 5 and it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people and they said why have we done this that we have let Israel go from serving us and they made ready. He made ready his chariot and took his people with him. Then he followed those people. From verse 23, the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea. Even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels that they drove them heavily so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And then in verse 28, and the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. And there remained not so much as one of them. Just before this judgment came on them, they determined to sin. They went on in their plan to sin. But it was too late. The day of repentance was gone. The time of grace was forever gone for them. And 
they perished. They sinned too near the end of their time. In Daniel chapter 4, Daniel chapter 4, from verse 28, all this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. Pride was in his heart. He had a chance to repent. He did not know that judgment was very near. He did not know that the announcer of the judgment of God was ready in heaven. And he was looking at his kingdom and his pride filled his heart and said, This is the kingdom I built by my power. And immediately the judgment fell upon him. And, it, and they shall drive thee from men. And thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. And seven times shall pass over thee until thou know that the Most High rulers in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. The same hour the sin was the sinful, uh, was the sin fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven from men. And did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his ears were grown like the eagle's feathers, and his nails like bird's claws. He kept on sinning, and kept on sinning, until even at the very time judgment was near, he still committed sin. The next king after him was like that. Chapter 5 of Daniel, from verse 1. Belshazzar king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, whilst he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem that the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines my drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And the king and his princes, his wife and his concubines drank in them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver and of brass, of iron, of wood and of stone in the same hour. In the same hour, in the same hour, came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loose, and his knees smote one against another. He sinned too far. From verse 25, And this is the writing that was written, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Euphosin. This is the interpretation of the sin. Mene, God has numbered thy kingdom, and finished it. No repentance, no chance, no grace, no mercy, no time anymore. God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Take ill, thou art wage in the balances and art found wanting. Pace, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Verse 30, in that night was Belshazzar, king 
of the Chaldeans slain. That's how he went to hell. In the New Testament, in Acts chapter 12, Acts of the Apostles chapter 12, from verse 19. And when Herod had sought for him and found him not, he examined the keepers and commanded that they should be put to death. And he went down from Judea to Caesarea and there abode. And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon. But they came with one accord to him and made, having made blasters, the king's chamberlain, their friend, desired peace. Because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon a third day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God and not of a man. And immediately, and immediately, Brother, sister, he did not say goodbye at home. He said, I am, I'm, I'm going and I'll be coming back. He did not say, well, I, I'm prepared. I want to go. I want to leave the world today. No, he did not know. But pride filled his heart. But he did not know that there will be no chance to pray. There will be no chance for repentance. He did not know that pride will send him to hellfire straight away, immediately and suddenly. But immediately. The angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory and was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. The people in Sodom, they continued in their sin. And even though judgment was very, very near, they still continued. That is how judgment will come upon sinners, upon backsliders if they don't return in time. Because the Bible says, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But then before they slept that night, the angels caught Lot, and they told Lot their mission in Sodom. And he told him what to do in Genesis chapter 19 from verse 12. And the man said unto Lord, As thou hear any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place, for we will destroy this place. Because the cry of them is waxing great, before the face of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spake unto his son Saint Lord, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons in law. They did not take him serious. And there are those who are attending church services who will not know they are listening to the last sermon they will ever listen to. We have known before people who came in here and they listened to the last message without their knowing that it was the last message they were listening to. But it has happened to some people that they came, they listened, they had a chance to repent, they had a chance to make their ways right before the Lord, they had a chance to consecrate their lives to the Lord, they had a chance to follow the Lord, they had a chance to settle the whole account and to have their names written in the book of life. If they didn't make use of the chance, and they went away, and the following Monday, we couldn't see them anymore. It was just an information we had that so and so is no more in the world. These people did not know they were listening to the last message. They didn't take it very seriously. Brother, sister, the last message you are going to listen to may not uh, 
start with choruses. There may not be chorus singing, as there was no chorus singing here. There may not be a good choir. The organist may not be around to play. And the, 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 the choir may not even sing well that particular day. And you, you may say, well, uh, they spoil the message tonight. You may not know, well, that is just the last message for you. And the preacher may not preach a long, long message. It may just be a short message, a single sentence. Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the place. And you'll be saying, uh-uh, he is not a good preacher. Look at how he's preaching. Look at how he's saying it. And you wouldn't know that is just the last message. They didn't know. And they thought that was a jester. Somebody playing. But let me teach you this as believers. There are times we evangelize too late. Lot had been in this city for a long, long time. He did not talk. The wickedness of these people vexed him. He didn't like their wickedness, but he did not preach to them. He allowed these people to come and make marriage proposals to his own daughters, and yet he will not preach anything to them. Now the last time came, and he was sent out to go and preach to them, but it was too late. It can be too late. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, there was a man also that preached too late to his children. Where is your wife tonight? She doesn't like to come to Bible study. You may be preaching too late to her. Where is your husband here tonight? Well, he does not like the gospel. Where are your children tonight? Well, my children say, Mommy, Daddy, you have enjoyed the world. You have had a nice time. This is our time. Let us enjoy the world. When we are as old as you are, we shall receive the Lord Jesus Christ and we shall stop committing sin. Or uh, maybe it's the parents that will say, well, um, I, I still want to have a little sin in the world before I make ready for heaven. They may not know that that message from their child is the last message. The message from your brother-in-law, from your sister-in-law, is the last message. The message you heard on the bus, they may not know that is the very last message. How many people have had messages in the bus? And that was the last message for them. And they died later without repenting. But Eli, this old man, heard that his children were doing wrong. He did not warn them. He did not preach to them. He did not teach them. He did not discipline them. By the time he preached, it was too late for those children. First Samuel chapter 2, from verse 12. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. The priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servant came while the flesh was in seething with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand. And he struck it into the pan or kettle or cauldron, or porch, all that the flesh hook brought up, the priest took for himself. So they did in Shiloh unto all the Israelites that came thither. Also, before they burnt the fire, the priest servant came and said to the man that sacrificed, Give flesh to roast for the priest, for he will not have sodden flesh of thee, but raw. And if any man said unto him, let them not fail to burn the fat presently, and then take as much as thy soul desireth. Then they will answer him, Nay, but thou shalt give it unto me now, and if not, I will take it by force. Wherefore, the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord. For men abhorred the offering of the Lord, but Samuel, but Samuel, in your denomination, the priests, the pastors, the Sunday school teachers may be acting like the sons of Eli. You be that Samuel, the light shining in a dark place, the white lily growing out of a dirty environment but never dirty, remaining white 
be the light of the world and be the salt of the earth. But Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child, guided with a leading effort. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Year by year, uh, all those things were still going on with the children of Eli. And Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife and said, The Lord give thee seed of this woman for the loan which is lent to the Lord. And they went unto their own home. And the Lord visited Anna so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before the Lord. I read that to show you that a long time had gone by. Because Anna now had three sons and two daughters. And yet, the children of Eli went on in this evil way. Now Eli was very old and heard all that his son did unto, Israel, unto all Israel. And how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Denominations are just like that. The priests, oh, they could be bad. They could be wicked. Some people don't like us saying it. If we don't say it, we'll just be like them. But if we say it, maybe there is nobody else saying it. If we say it, it will be a warning to them. And they, they may repent before the day of judgment comes upon them. And he said unto them, Why do ye such things? For I hear of your evil dealings with all these people, instead of removing them from being priests. Instead of removing them from ministering unto the Lord, he said, well, I hear what you are doing. But they died eventually. Look at verse 34. There shall be a sign unto thee that shall come upon thy two sons, Ophni and Phinehas. In one day they shall die, both of them. And dying, they died. Dying, they died. Why? Because their father preached to them too late. I know that you know the story, the, the parable in Matthew chapter 25. But I want to show you something there tonight. Matthew chapter 25. Uh, there were ten virgins. Five were wise, five were foolish. The wise ones knew that extra oil was necessary. The wise virgins knew that they will not be able to give to the foolish. And they knew where the oil was being sold. But they preached to them later. In Matthew chapter 25 verse 9. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell. And buy for yourself. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. The point we're making is the wise virgins preached too late. They were together with the foolish virgins. They saw that their lambs were going out, and they could have counseled them. They could have preached to them before it was too late, saying, virgins, we're expecting the bridegroom. But look at your lambs. They're going out. Why not go and buy before the Lord will come? Before the bridegroom will come. But they kept quiet. Until. Now let's read the whole thing. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. We took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lambs. The foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lambs are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, not so. The point is, many times, we as virgins, we are slow in 
teaching or counseling or helping our fellow brothers and sisters who happen to be foolish virgins. Remember, this is a parable on the kingdom of God. This is a large family. We are very many here. Now, I cannot see all that your wife is doing, but you are the pastor in your home. You are the head of your home. You are the pastor and the counselor and the teacher over your children, over your wife. And you are the keeper. You are the watchman over your family. And if you see your wife doing something, you see that she is sleeping, she is not able to pray. You see that her faith is going out. What are you doing? Are you preaching to her? Or are you saying, well, uh, she will hear it at the Bible study. You are your sister's keeper. You are your wife's keeper. Or it may be the wife. You see that your husband is not being carried away by business, by the love of money, or by friends. Or what he is buying now, she, he wasn't buying them before. You are your husband's keeper. You are the prayer warrior at home. If you are the wife, before it is too late, you will be warning your husband. Before it is too late, you will be warning your children. And the same thing, a friend to a friend, a brother to a brother. It is not all things to come and report to me. There are some things you ought to settle yourself as a watchman over your brother, as a counselor for your brother, as a helper to your brother. You see that your brother is growing cold. You see that your brother is missing his quiet time. You see that your brother is not praying as he used to pray. You see that work is now taking the attention of your brother. You don't come and run to me on that. You are, you are the preacher, you are the evangelist, and you are the pastor, you are the teacher for your brother. And you are to tell your brother, my brother, uh, trim your lamp off. And then your brother will see that that lamp is going out. You will say, oh, get you, go and buy oil. Before it is too late. But if you wait until the time of the rapture, and then you begin to say, now brother, what are you doing? Let's go. It is too late at that time. A sister to a sister. You see that that sister is already cutting her skirt, her dresses, and the dresses are becoming shorter. The sleeves are being taken off, and you see that now uh, sister so-and-so has gone to the barber to cut her hair, and you know it. Now you don't come to report that to me. You go to your sister and you say, my sister, what are you doing? The Lord is coming because you are your sister's keeper. It is not everything we come to report to the leader. You have to go on your knees on some of the things. You have to talk to one another. You have to pray together. You have to warn one another. But the wise virgins did not do that at in time. It was at the late hour they began to preach now, saying, you go and buy for yourself. We must not be late. In our offices, in the deeper life offices, where the full-time workers are working, you'll see some workers who are not coming. Well, I may not be around. They're not working for me. They may be away without taking permission. It is you that will call your brother and say, my brother, you came at 10 o'clock. If you are working for the government, can you do that? Don't you see that is unfaithfulness? That is dishonesty. Or you see one of the workers, you are also a worker. Uh, she might uh, take mat and just sleep. And then she'll sleep for three hours. You, you say, sister, what is happening? Eh, I was just tired today. In the in government work, she cannot do that. You don't have to come to me, run into me, brother. Come and look at the workers. You are your sister's keeper. Tell her you are working for God. You are being paid from the tithes and offerings of the children of God. And you are not doing enough work. Or you say, brother, he is already exaggerating. He is playing with lying. He is already committing sin. Now you are to talk to your brother. Or you, a brother is driving and you are in the vehicle. And uh, right in the town, it's uh, going on 100 kilometers per hour. And as he's talking, he's, as he's driving, he's talking, looking here and there. And then you say, brother, look, this thing you are doing is very dangerous. So, uh, I'm a child of God. No danger. He has signed contract with death. That no death on my face now. And you know that his problem is impatience. Work of the flesh. You don't need to come and run to me and say, brother, come and see brother so and so. He drives recklessly. Go to your brother. Go to your sister and talk to one another. Because the Lord is going to ask you eventually, where is your brother? Where is your sister? 
warn one another, teach one another, evangelize among one another. Let me tell you, we are now uh, making a mistake, grievous mistake. We're evangelizing those outside. And those of us who are here, don't you know, after you have got sanctified, it becomes your responsibility to begin to preach sanctification to your fellow brother, to your fellow sister. When you are free from anger, when you are free from, uh, from envy, from jealousy, it is, your, it is immediately your, your responsibility to begin to testify. When you come to the Bible study, my brother, I am sanctified. It is wonderful. He has done something for me. And you know, I'll pray with you. And you will get the same thing because if two of us shall agree as touching anything that we ask, the Lord shall give unto us. That's your work. That is your work. You see a member of the choir who is missing the practices. Now the choir master may not know. It is you that will go to that person and preach to her or preach to him before it is too late. Or you see somebody under discipline and the person is not taking it very serious. It is you that will go to that person and preach to the person and help the person. But it must not be too late. Are uh, people getting married? And you know that in their marriage plans, the type of clothes they are trying to wear. And uh, during the courtship, they are staying under closed doors. And you know that they are committing sin together. And sister so-and-so will go and stay overnight in brother so-and-so's house. And then you keep quiet. You say, well, I'll not say anything. I'll not do anything. They are backsliding. You too, you are wicked. You are your brother's keeper. Don't gossip about them. Go to them and say, brother, I see that this is not right. It is when you try to correct them, when you counsel them, when you teach them, and they reject. It is then you come to the ministry, you come to the leader and say, I have tried, I have tried to help, but I cannot help. But if you, if you counsel him, if you teach him, and the brother says, oh, I am sorry, I am sorry, and he corrects it, you don't need to report anything because the problem is settled, and the sin is cleansed away, and the sin is forgotten. But... If we preach too late, the people will say we are just jesting. Lot went to his son's in law and he warned them, but they felt he was jesting because now it was late. In Genesis chapter 19, reading from verse 15, and when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the man laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters. The Lord being merciful unto him, and they brought him forth, and set him without the city. He had no reason to linger, but remember, all his property was in Sodom. All the cattle in Sodom, the tents in Sodom, all his belongings in Sodom. And the angel said, you are not going to take anything out. But the mercy of God has spared you. You'll go out and you'll escape the judgment. As for your cattle, as for your property, as for your servants, as for your tent, as for your houses, as for all that you have, it will go with fire. When the Lord will come, your being on level 10 will not matter. Car, Pidgeot, or Mercedes Benz, or Vokes, or ordinary bicycle. When Jesus comes, well, if you are still holding to that key and holding to that steering, Jesus will leave you on your steering alone. But remember that all those things will not go with you. Why not take care of your heart? of the spirit man, of your life, of your future, with the Lord. It is what you do for the Lord now that will be rewarded on the last day. But because of all that Lot had in Sodom, he lingered. He knew the judgment had come. He knew that the angels had spoken the truth. He himself had preached it. He said, up, for the Lord will destroy this place. You know, there are people who preach hell, and yet they still linger in the world. They say there is a heaven. And yet, they are not willing to go there. They say there is a hell, and fire is going to burn in hell. And yet, they linger and linger in the world. 
They may be lingering in the tobacco company. They may be lingering in the beauty where they are working. But as he lingered, verse 17, it came to pass. When they, were, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Neither stay thou in all the plain. Es escape to the mountain. Lest thou be consumed. He was told to go away from that place. And then the judgment was now coming. But before the judgment came, Lot must be settled. It's going to be so on the last day. Before the great tribulation strikes in this world, the rapture will first of all take place. The believers will be gathered home. They'll be caught up together with the Lord. And if you are bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, if you are cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ, a day is coming. A day is coming. When the Lord God in heaven, when he'll cause the archangel to blow the trumpet and the Lord himself, himself shall appear and a child will be taken out of the family. The husband will be taken away out of the family. Or the wife will be taken away out of the family. Or it may be the driver that is a child of God. He will be taken away while on motion. Or the pilot will be taken away while on motion. Or in the machine room where the people are still working with dangerous machines. If there is a believer there, the believer will be taken away. And anywhere the believers will be taken away one by one, one by one, one by one. And they will all be gathered up. Until they have gone, the judgment cannot begin. But when we have gone, when we have gone, but our mothers and our fathers who are saved, uh -huh, is before you were born, have been following religion, religion that did not save them from sin. The pastors who have been saying, before you knew how to read the Bible, I have been preaching. And all the religious people who are saying, uh, it is not there, it's not only one way that leads to Rome. Anybody, if we do the best we can, if we do good, maybe we'll get to heaven after we are gone. Uh -uh, the Antichrist will come into the world. And the great tribulation will strike this world. It will be terrible. But thank God, the great tribulation cannot come until we have gone. And when Lord was gone out, when Lord was gone out, then the punishment came upon the people. Look at verse 22. Haste thee, escape thither. For I cannot do anything till thou come see them. From verse 23, the sun was risen upon the land. When Lot entered into Zohar, then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and the inhabitants of the cities that, with that which grew upon the ground. In verse 28, and he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain be and beheld and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. Judgment came and on the last day, judgment is coming. Be assured of it. Though hands join in hands, the sinners will not go unpunished. In Revelation, Chapter 20, reading from verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was, not, there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great. School children, you are included. Don't say, well, I am too young to receive the Lord as my personal savior. I am too young to repent. I am too young to give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. If your name is not written in the book of life, that time you will cry, but mommy will be, will be rejoicing in heaven. Daddy will be rejoicing in heaven. Small children who have been brought to the Bible study and are saying, and the Bible study is for mommy and daddy. And the children will be playing around. And the ushers will say, go to the Bible study. No, no, no. I don't want to go to Bible study. I want to play with my, with my brothers and with my friends. The Bible study, those who are going to heaven, is only for the adults. Wait and see. 
you school children, secondary one, secondary two, you go to school and in the school uh, you write a paper and you light it and you're already practicing how to smoke. The judgment is coming. You will cry. There will be no mommy or there will be no daddy to say don't cry. You will cry and cry and cry and cry. School children going to school, going with bad company, committing sin, committing morality, going to smoke, Indian hand. Look at what the Bible says. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. According to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the, the dead which were in them. And they were judged. And they were judged. And they were judged. That's the day when the witch will be judged. When the wizard will be judged. When the herbalist will be judged. When the juju worshippers will be judged. When those who are killing other people, when they will be judged. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Look at verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Is your name written in the book of life? Or are you still sitting down there? I am an Anglican. Wait and see. You'll see Anglican burning in hellfire. I am still CAC. I am Baptist. I am Pentecostal. I am Apostolic faith. Uh, wait and see. Wait and see. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. But let's come back to Genesis chapter 19. Remember the warning that the angels gave unto them only four. Only four of them. And the, the angels told them, don't look behind you. Don't look behind you. Look at verse 26. But his wife, but his wife, look back from behind him. And she became a pillar of salt. She died instantly and went to hellfire. Luke chapter 17, verse 32. Remember? Remember? Anytime sin comes like temptation, any times it comes like a rushing mighty wind upon you. And your flesh is saying, commit sin, commit sin. And your brain is saying, commit sin, commit sin. And it looks like if you don't commit sin, you will die. If you don't have fornication, you will die. If you don't go to meet the prostitute, you will die. Remember something that they were told, don't look back. But she looked back and she became a pillar of salt. And in Luke chapter 17, verse 32, remember Lord's wife. Some people say they are saved and they are saved. But congrats that you are here tonight. The Lord is warning you. If you have been saved out of Sodom and Gomorrah, if you have been saved out of this world of sin, the world we are living in is very, very bad. Very, very bad. Almost on every street, there are prostitutes. Almost on every street, you will see sinners. Some people even come from another country, from neighboring countries around Nigeria here, and they come purposely to commit sin, purposely to become prostitutes. And they are there. With so little cover, you can commit sin and just pave your way into hellfire. And there are people who will want to buy certificates for you. There are people who want to give you question papers. There are people who can smuggle cars, smuggle anything, and give you. If, if, you are in, if you are in this city, if you are in this world, at this time, and you want to get to heaven, there are times to just close your eyes. Because right on the street, they will be committing the sin. If you don't take your eyes away and just close your eyes, you'll just perish with them. In the bus. In the place of work, all the story they will be telling, they will talk and talk and talk. They are just like Sodom and Gomorrah. If you don't block your ears from all their stories, you will just die and go to hellfire. Even in the churches, they will be embracing themselves, kissing themselves, committing adultery, committing fornication. A boy will be writing notes of sin to the ladies right in the church. Sin is everywhere, everywhere now. But if you don't make up your mind saying, I am going to heaven. Saying, I am going to heaven. The Apostle Paul said, I put my body under. This is my body. Ah, oh, my body is not finding it easy. My body just wants to run around. My body wants to be talking when I should be praying. My body wants to be careless, but I put this body under. Why? Let's start preaching to others. I become a castaway. 
the children of Israel, after they were led out of Egypt, they chose a golden calf for themselves. And the Lord said he has rejected them. In, in Exodus chapter 32, verse 33, The Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. If you sin in secret, my brother, my sister. If you commit a little sin in secret, a little bribe in secret, a little giving of alcohol during your marriage in secret when nobody knows. Remember, he that sins against God, God will blot his name out of the book of life. If you give your body, lady, you give your body because you are looking for, you, for work. You give your body to the manager so you can get work. If you sin against him, he says, he'll blot your name out of the book of life, which he has written in Ezekiel chapter 18. Remember? That sin is very near you. Sin is everywhere. It is you that will make up your mind. I will not sin. I will not go into the ways of the world. Whether in public or in the private. Or in the secret. I will not commit sin. The sin that is, uh, that is rampant. That is common. In the age in which we are living now. Is the sin of fornication. And it is getting into the churches. Beware. Girls of age of 14. They are getting pregnant. Age of 15, they are getting pregnant. Boys of 16 years of age or 17 years of age, they are knowing about girls and what they should not know until they are married. It is common everywhere because the Lord will soon come. And you'll be watching because you'll soon hear the sound of the trumpet. You'll soon hear the sound of the trumpet. It may just be any moment from now uh, because this night of backsliding will not continue for a long time. The church is getting ready. And the Lord is getting ready. And the trumpet will soon be blown. But I'm praying that we'll be ready on that day. Amen. In Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 24. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness, and committeth iniquity, and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he has done shall not be mentioned. In his trespass, that he, ha that he has trespassed, in his sin, that he has sinned, in them shall he die. Verse 26, when a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness, and committeth iniquity, and dies in them, for his iniquity, that he has done, shall he die. Ezekiel chapter 33, Ezekiel 33, verse 12, Therefore, son of man, Say unto the children of thy people, The righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinneth. When I say to the righteous, he shall surely live. If he trusts to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousnesses shall not be remembered, but for his iniquity that he has committed, he shall die for it. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 22, the Lord has preserved this warning for everyone, saying, And he shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure unto the end shall be saved we must endure unto the end in hebrews chapter 12 hebrews chapter 12 a passage that you know a passage that is neglected in various assemblies but take one in today take one in today hebrews chapter 12 reading from verse 14 follow peace with all men and holiness Without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator of profane person, as Esau, who for one muscle of meat sold his birthright. Are you going to sell your new birth because of getting employment? Because of wanting to work? 
because of wanting to avoid physical punishment. You want to sell your birthright. You want to sell the new birth. You want to sell the certificate of born again. Verse 17, for ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. In Revelation chapter 22, the warning is so clear. But many people are already looking back. Many people are already turning back. And many people are already getting lost. For I testify unto every man that heard the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. You remember Lot's wife. They came out of Sodom and Gomorrah. And as they were going, and as they were going, the fire kept burning behind them. And his, her heart was in the treasure she left in Sodom. And she remembered perhaps all her jewelry, all her powder, all her cosmetics, all her dresses, all her friends, all the, all the birthday parties that she ought to have attended, that she had not attended. She remembered all the evil things that were around. And she remembered all the things they left behind. What are you remembering that you have left behind? What are you looking at? What are you looking for? What are you looking back for? Is it because of going to marry an unbeliever? Is it because of your flesh? Why not go on your knees and say, God, I want to make it. I want to make it because, behold, in a twinkling of an eye, the trumpet shall sound, and they which are in Christ shall be caught up together with them who have, who have, who have died and then are risen from the dead. The Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. Will you be ready? Remember Lord's wife. We thank you for the things you have reminded us. Father, we pray that the day that is coming will not come upon us unprepared in Jesus' name.